When I was in high school, part of the curriculum of one of my English courses was reading James Harriet, um, an English author, writes feel-good stuff about life in, I think it's the 1930s and 40s, uh, of a city-born veterinarian living among the country people of Yorkshire in the north of England. And he idealizes, um, while insisting he's not idealizing, he idealizes northern life, um, northern rural life. Um, one of the interesting little vignettes that he paints was, is of a family of blunt-speaking, hard-working uh, farm folk who, um, you know, the men are all built like oxes and uh, not terribly sophisticated mentally, but not actually stupid. Um, and, you know, after a day of baling hay or, you know, generally doing hard physical labor, the whole family goes into the kitchen sits down on the benches that they've built into the walls and just sits there, you know, for hours. <clears throat> or not really for hours, but they just sit there. They don't say anything. Um, now, Harriet, the author, was sort of uh, commenting in a sort of a humorous way about, look at this kind of silly habits of these people. How do they do this? Um, how do you just sit there. Now he juxtaposes this against um, pure laziness in that these people are not lazy. They're perfectly prepared to get up and do 16 hours of back-breaking labor every day and think nothing of it. As long as there's a nice uh, meal at the end of the day, uh, you know, and we can sit down and, you know, life is good. Um, that's kind of the high point of their day, is the day that they just sit there and maybe grunt at each other or say the odd little, you know, non-deep thing to each other. And, um, you know, that's, they're okay with that. This is their life. In fact, they, they probably wouldn't want to live any other way. Now, that's an interesting juxtaposition in that he kind of, he's poking fun at these people for having th these habits um, in, a, in a nice way. He's not saying that they're stupid people or anything. But he's saying, my God, these people are different from me, I tell you. Um, he's poking fun at their ability to just sit and be. Now, we poke fun at things that in many ways make us uncomfortable. Now, why don't you go and imagine yourself sitting in the kitchen with those people. Say you're going to sit there for two hours. And you're just going to... You're not even going to twiddle your thumbs. <laughs> you're going to put your hands on your knees. And in what, you know these um, old English kitchen sort of benches, the, the, the back is straight, so you're not really sitting in a terribly comfortable position. And you just, <laughs> you know, I, for two hours. Imagine yourself doing that. Well, I, if I did that, I'd go insane about ten minutes into it. Um, I'd have to say something. There's a bunch of people around me. Um, we're not doing anything. i got to be doing something. Well, these people know how to do things. <laughs> they'll they'll go out and they'll work their muscles hard for you know 16 hours and then they just shut off after having done so they'll get up they'll put in another backbreaking day of work the next day and then they'll sit down and what you and I would consider vegetate for a couple of hours or an hour before just going to bed big deal some life um, these people are, own their own farm they were well enough off that you know they they weren't driven by poverty to work hard. It's just that's the sort of life that seemed natural to them. And then when it's time to shut off, they know exactly how to shut off. Um, I've actually been in that situation before with a native Canadian family. Um, you go and you oftentimes you go into their house and they're they're you, you sit down in the living room and they they spend an awful lot of their time sitting in the living room. Um, and sometimes if there's a bunch of them sitting there, you know, they're usually talking. Um, but if the conversation peters out and nobody has anything to say, they're okay with just sitting there. You know, just... You know, for however long it lasts, they don't care. They're not in a rush to suddenly break the silence the way we are. Um... Now, when I'm discussing Native Canadians, there's always the risk of otherizing or exoticizing or something, uh, these people, and I don't really want to get into that, and I'll, I'll take whatever heat people want to 
uh, apply to me uh, for generalizing in this way. But I think that people who have developed that capacity as a result of their environment, in the case of the Yorkshire farming family, uh, a pretty limited scope for entertainment in the evenings. In the old days, no radio, TV, internet, anything. Uh, maybe somebody might have a fiddle, and he'd play the fiddle, and the other people would listen to it. But beyond that, there's there's not really a lot to keep your mind working. So you don't need this constant workout to keep your mind incredibly sharp, which is why I think country people have always been considered to be somewhat stupid. They're not stupid. It's just that they, they their minds are not formed in such a way as to demand constant workout, as it were. That's an interesting thing. Um, being. Kick away all the props, all the distractions, everything, and just be. Now, there are people out there who can do this. As I say, I get the impression that Native Canadians, if they're the sort that are, as we say here, fresh off the reserve, and there's a lot of them, um, they do seem to have adapted to periods of time when there's nothing happening and there's nothing to do. Say 200, 300 years ago, um, they've got as much uh, dried meat as they're going to need for the winter. They've put away everything that they're going to require for the winter. Uh, dried fish, uh, dried roots, berries, whatever. They've got enough to eat. They've got enough to wear. They've prepared themselves for any possible eventuality. And for the next six weeks, they're just waiting for winter to happen. What do you do? Well, you sit in front of your teepee and you smoke. For days and days and days, you watch the sun come up. You watch the sun go down. Then you go to bed. You make babies a bit. Okay, You can only do that for so long. Uh, you, I don't know, sing a few songs, but <laughs> just sitting there and being is an extremely difficult thing for other people to learn. I think it's an extremely valuable capacity uh, to learn, to learn to just sort of observe everything and just take it all in. Um, it's something that they do say gets um, a more pronounced as you get older. I'm looking forward to that when you know I'm 49, and I'm I'm looking forward to that part of the aging process when you know you see the old guy sitting in his rocking chair and he's just staring at the world going by. Um, I cannot, for the life of me, see that as a terrible fate. I think, wow, how wonderful to live inside yourself in the eternal moment, the eternal present. I even face the fact that I'll, you know, actually I probably won't, but it, it, there, there is the possibility that I'll end up in a nursing home. Okay. You, if you've ever been to a nursing home, you go to the <clears throat> recreation room or whatever, the lounge, there's just a lot of old people just sitting there. I walk past one every day going to work, and I look in the window and I see... They're just sitting there. You know, maybe somebody's making a few mumbling remarks to the other ones, and the other ones are just sitting there being. Um, <clears throat> I can't see that as a bad thing. Um, it's great to be engaged in the world and to have things that you do, and because uh, I have tons of stuff that I do. It's all useless, just pointless distractions, but it, it is stuff that I'm engaged with. But I, I like the idea of learning to disengage when you can. Um, you know, the stereotypical condemnation of the modern world is that we can't just sit and be. Um, we always have to be accomplishing something. And James Harriet's portrayal of the Yorkshire farm family was, maybe he meant it this way, a backhand um, criticism of his own English um, accomplishment neurosis. Uh, the English, you know, I, I, I like the English, and uh, you know, there's a lot of English in me, in my culture or whatever, 
but the English are notorious as a people who can't sit still. They always have to be doing something. They, they, all the other Europeans traditionally have said they're kind of crazy in that way. They always got to be busy doing something, or else they go crazy. Um, it's not really peculiar to the English. It's just peculiar to a certain type of middle-class, industrious English mindset, as the hard-working Yorkshire farming family proved. They were perfectly okay with what the Italians called la dolce far niente, the joy of doing nothing. I've got uh, an interesting portrait I've taken of the English folk band, uh, or not folk band, I guess the rock band, uh, Chumbawamba. Uh, it's in the links down there. And I think that it was deliberately designed to sort of mimic that kind of uh, scene that you would see in, I'm sure, a lot of northern English homes and pubs and uh, uh, tea houses and uh, kitchens, living rooms, in a certain age where you would go in and there's three ox-like brothers sitting there with their strong-willed sisters uh, sitting there and maybe an old guy with no teeth and their mother or, you know, a dog on the floor. And they're just... And they're okay with that. Um, <clears throat> just being, just creating a default in your life uh, is uh, where, where you can just sort of say, okay, everything's fine the way it is, so I'm not going to do anything. That looks to me like a, an art that's dying out in the world. And I think that it has value. I think that it, it really does have uh, value and that it's not something that you can just start doing. It is definitely something that you either have to be socialized to do or you have to try very hard to, uh, uh, to learn that skill. Um, as I say, I see the native Canadians, and I believe that a lot of them seem to have that skill, and strangely enough, without trying to idealize them, I admire them for that. Um, being is not an easy thing to do.